In this video, you're going to learn to implement feedforward networks uh, with Keras and build a little application to predict handwritten digits. In the introduction to deep learning in this course, you've learned about multi-layer perceptrons or MOPs for short. Uh, these kinds of networks are also sometimes called uh, densely connected networks. And to build them, we essentially have to stack layers of um, so-called dense layers on top of each other uh, with activations. A technique that we're going to use for regularization is uh, called a dropout, and we build Keras uh, dropout layers into our network to achieve that. We then build a sequential model from both uh, dense and dropout layers uh, to arrive at a uh, application. Okay, let's start with dense layers. To initialize a dense layer, we have to do uh, a few things. First off, you always have to specify the number of output neurons or units that the layer is going to have. Secondly, usually you want to provide an activation function. So if you don't, uh, there, there won't be any. Okay, so there's, there's none uh, right there as a, as a default keyword. And if you want to have a, a sigmoid, then simply put the name sigmoid there, or ReLU, or TanH, whatever you like. The third argument is use bias, which is set to true, uh, which indicates that we are using a bias term. And you sh probably shouldn't touch that unless you uh, know what you're doing. Here. And the last two um, keywords in, in, this, in the signature are the kernel initializer and the bias initializer, uh, which are set to two specific uh, initialization uh, techniques. So the kernel or the weights of this dense layer are set to a Glorot uniform initialization and the biases are simply set to zero. So unless you know uh, a lot about initialization, which we, which we don't really cover in, in this lecture here, uh, you probably shouldn't uh, touch many of the keywords that are provided in Keras for you. So dropout layers are much easier to specify. Essentially, you just have to uh, specify a rate, meaning a value between uh, 0 and 1, which indicates the fraction of units to drop in each forward pass. If you want, you can also specify a random seed for reproducibility. All right, let's move on to uh, building an actual uh, application. We're going to use the MNIST dataset of handwritten digits. Uh, the MNIST dataset uh, consists of uh, 60,000 uh, train samples and 10,000 samples for tests. And each individual sample is a 28 by 28 image, which has a handwritten uh, digit uh, on it. The labels are uh, simply encoded as the actual digits, 0 to 9. So to build this application, we first import the MNIST dataset from Keras, then uh, also import the utils function that we use later on, and our sequential model, and the two layers that we're going to use, dense and dropout. OK. The first thing we specify here is the batch size. Uh, and we set it to uh, 128. This batch, batch size will be used in, in the forward pass and also for predictions. The number of classes is the number of uh, digits there are, namely 10. And we're going to train our network for 20 epochs in total. So then simply what we have to do to load data is call data to retrieve uh, training and test features and labels. OK, next up is data preprocessing. Um, so I mentioned before that uh, the MNIST uh, samples are 28 by 28 um, images. And we need to flatten them to a 784 vector to feed them into a dense layer. So first, we're going to uh, reshape both train and test data, then uh, set them to, to float type and divide them by 255 to arrive at values that lie between 0 and 1. As a last step in, in preprocessing, we're going to one-hot encode um, the labels that we have with our function 2 categorical. 
So that means, for instance, if we have a label um, with the number uh, zero on it, this digit zero, this is going to be transformed into a vector of length uh, 10 that has all zeros but a one at the first place. Next, we can proceed to defining and running our model. So we start by initializing a sequential model and then adding dense and drop out layers uh, one by one. All right. In the first layer, you see that we also specify an input shape, uh, which is essentially 784, the length of our vectors. This input shape has to be provided only in the first uh, layer, and uh, succeeding shapes in other layers are then inferred by Keras for you. All right. So as you can see, we have three dense layers in total, namely one with output length uh, 512, another one with uh, 512, and then the final layer has 10 uh, output classes. And we also add two dropout layers with a rate, a drop rate of uh, 20%. All right, once we have specified our model, we can uh, get a summary printed on, on the command line by, by imposing model.summary. Next, we compile our model with a categorical cross entropy and specify the optimizer as stochastic gradient descent and also evaluate the accuracy metric. Okay. So we can then fit our model with the train data that we have. We set the batch size as, as defined previously and the epochs. And uh, we can also specify validation data, namely uh, the test data we've uh, created. So the last step we do in this model is we create a, a, a score by evaluating the model. In this case, uh, we get back um, a pair, namely the test loss and the accuracy, which we print to, to the command line as well. If you do so, you should achieve about 98% uh, accuracy with this model. All right, that's it uh, for um, multi-layer perceptrons. In the next lecture, we learn about uh, recurrent neural networks with Keras and LSTMs in particular.